What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Glitter and Garbage. I'm Justine Marino here with one of my favorite guests in the world. He's my friend. He is an incredible celebrity astrologer. You know him. You love him. I mean, People Magazine, all the credits. He's got so much going on. It's Kyle Thomas. Roar. Yes. Roar. Hello. Thank Hi. you for having me. You are roaring with that shirt. Can we just say? Yeah. Dump him. <laughs> and with the the pecs coming out? Okay. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I came to 2024 to slay. Yeah, you did. And you came, it's Valentine's Day. You're giving me a Valentine's sleigh right now. <laughs> That's the plan. That is the plan. Yeah. Now, yeah. how have you been? We've been keeping up. You know, every time you've come on, we've gotten some updates about your love life because you are a, a single man in uh, in Hollywood. How has it been going for you? Are you still single? What's going on? Well, I feel like there's, you know, with us talking about all the, the love and compatibility and, and Valentine's this this week, I'm, I'm really excited to dive into that for all of us. Yeah. But for me, it's been sort of a journey since the last time I saw you. I mean, I bumped into like five exes, like all at the same time. Wow. I drunkenly sent flowers to my ex, <gasps> to Wait, his house. What? Like it was it's been a mess. That's like but, a um, next level drunk dial. <laughs> Like, I know, I know. Yeah, I can't, yeah, yeah. So that was that happened. Um, but it was just sort of like an olive branch of like, sure. I just happy birthday. I hope you're doing well. So <laughs> can I ask? Here's some flowers. Make sure that your boyfriend sees it. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, wait. What what was the bouquet that you sent? Uh, it was this beautiful bouquet of sunflowers. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so yeah. So cheery. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we had sort of we had sort of gotten to a little, you know. Confrontation at okay. the, at the bar a couple weeks prior. Sure, and I just wanted to again, you know, even if I wouldn't date someone again, I do want everyone to be happy. Um, but still, I you know, I just, I just kind of wanted to clear the air. Yeah, and, and so that happened. But God, I, 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 I I sent them, and then the. Uh, the flower company was like, hey, you know, like we can't get a hold of him and so we're, we can't drop them off. And yeah. I was like, okay, just cancel it. Yeah. And I guess they like climbed the fence to, oh. to, to, <laughs> to give it to him. <laughs> I know, I know. And he never said anything. He was like, you know, didn't say thank you, didn't, you know. Really? And, and again, it was not me like trying to be like, let's bang again because right. I'm not doing that. But it just was like, hey, you know, like yeah. there is still affection and a kindness and yes. compassion here. But so, this wasn't the Aquarian though, right? No, okay. fuck that guy. No, um, he, you know, he, it's, he and I from since like last, you know, August, we were like on and off back and forth. And again, I, I hope he's, he's doing well, but we just couldn't stop bumping into each other. Right. And, and it was sort of this thing. I'd like move on, wouldn't say anything. And then I, it's like we couldn't stop. Like at Runyon, at the grocery store, it's just like bars right. everywhere constantly. Right. Thanksgiving. Right. Like I just couldn't escape him. And so I'm like, well, maybe there's something to this. Like maybe we should, you know, you know, see each other again or something. And right. so like I took him to Comic-Con and we, we've had some really wonderful dates. <laughs> We, I know. I, you, I, I, you are a great guy to date. You're I like, I, I'll send you flowers if you're my ex. I'll take you to Comic-Con if we're barely dating. You are a fucking whiner and diner, I, and I yeah, love it. The the guy that I'm currently seeing right now, I just took him to the LA Zoo Lights. Oh, and my God. the Cara Hotel, which is sort of my place where I oh. wine and dine men. Okay. You know, so. Wait, what's his sign? He's a Taurus. Oh, okay. Taurus, Taurus. Yeah. Well, but, I told you it was always the best sex. So. Yes, you did. So why not just stick with it? <sighs> yeah. Well, you you know, and so that's that's sort of new, and it's interesting how people sort of like are in your orbit for a little bit, yeah. and then you know they come back around. And I feel like he and I matched with each other on like Hinge or Tinder. It was one of the two. Yeah, probably like five times. Yeah, and I'd always be like, hey, like the way that I date is, I always like to be like, hey, we can be friends. Yeah, we can get to know each other. Let's just see how it goes. Yeah, and without any pressure, and like also like not jumping sure, into bed. Sure, sure, sure. And so. I would always be like, hey, let's go hang out with friends. And we have a lot of mutual friends. Like, right. let's go do this. Or I would try to supply an idea. And he'd be like, oh, sorry, so busy. And I was always <laughs> like, fuck this. Yeah. So the so I, his friends are my friends. And so I mentioned to them that I, you know, I was back on the market because I wasn't pursuing that Aquarian dude. Yeah. And they were like, you really need to try to jump on him again. He's, yeah. He's sort of going through this like 
thing with someone else and I was like okay well you know whatever you you let him know yeah well he reaches out and he, in, in December and he's like I need to see you everyone's saying I need to see you wow now. so so I was like all right well you know I'm going for home for the holidays and yeah. he was like all right well let's pick January 5th like like as soon as you're back like I want to see you we have everything in, in the books so. yeah so we've seen each other like once every week since and Ooh. yeah he's 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 so sweet we're uh, yes, yeah, so I took him to the zoo lights, and again, I always try to do really cute, wonderful ideas. Yeah, cute. I, I bought uh, him some deep dish pizza oh. that we're gonna have Friday. Oh my god! And then for Valentine's Day, I'm taking him to a vampire masquerade ball. Wait, what? Yeah. Where is the vampire? It's masquerade? downtown. You want to come? I do, but I'm hosting Romeo and Juliet. It's on the 18th. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, you want to oh, come? Yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, so it's like we're gonna like we're actually we're gonna go to the leather store and get a bunch of uh, sexy the harness. The leather store. <laughs> we're gonna get like I want like a ball and chain kind of thing. Yes. And I want like a leather jock strap. And yes. You know some other kind of things. I mean, I, I like my kinky clothes. Yeah. So. Oh, I know. I've seen your harnesses <laughs> before. <laughs> I'm surprised I've never worn one here. You oh know? yeah, you've got to break out the harness now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so we're gonna do that. But again, it's like one thing that, like, if this leads to something great with him, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I'm also in the place in my life where I'm okay with romance just being for the sake of romance. Yeah. So if that's if it doesn't lead to him being a long term partner or an exclusive partner, that's okay. I mean, eventually I do want that, but you know, I think if you if you rush into things and expect them to always be what they have like they have to fit a mold yes then then it puts too much pressure on it and it isn't necessarily going to hopefully like give you what you want totally so yeah i guess that's my update i you know i i really i'm pretty excited to take him to pound town we're gonna have fun with that God, i'm so excited after the vampire ball yes you know, well, like, what, what, i love that after the <laughs> vampire ball because well, no, i want i want to get i want to get both <laughs> I want to get both he and I um, collars with chains. Oh, yes. So this, that's why I'm like, get over I love here. he's like this. Get over this here. could be a lot of things at the vampire ball. <laughs> get over here. Yeah, you could be, you know, jerking. You could be stabbing a vampire with a stake, you know? There's a lot of things. Um, and there's a lot of things for us to talk about today. I know, so much, so we've, much. We've got so many celebrities to get to. But first, speaking of relationships that kind of you don't really know where they're going and then maybe them ending up you know, being more than what you expected because you didn't have that expectation. Yeah, yeah. I have been wanting to ask you for a long time about me and my boyfriend, Mitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because we are, according to most things I've read, Pisces yeah. and Aries are not an obvious match. Of course, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. do give us hope in that area. But I did want to ask you, I've been a little scared to ask because, like, I know what you reveal will be pretty spot on uh, but I felt like in you know just in time for Valentine's Day why not let's see about the compatibility between me and Mitch according to the stars totally totally so we looked into this I also ran another chart for you as well yes you did which we're, gonna, were, compare <laughs> which we're gonna compare that um one of them is a little bit better <laughs> Ooh, but okay. uh so yes so you are Libra rising with an Aries sun mm -hmm. and a Scorpio moon your boyfriend is a Gemini rising okay. with a Pisces sun and a Pisces moon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when we are looking at compatibility, it's beyond just the sun sign and, sure. and moon sign. And we can see all the way that the different planets are interacting. So what I wrote here is there's obviously a lot of synergy here mm -hmm. when it comes to communication and domesticity, though. Those are areas that can be approved upon for you. Yes. I would say that you. Yeah, <laughs> That's pretty I would say, accurate. yeah, I mean, it's just like your communication is like it's there and mm -hmm. there's strong ability sometimes. But sometimes you just are just not on the same page. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you can't agree on something. Yeah. It's just sometimes that the mis miscommunication can be there. And yeah. I feel like then you probably want to stab a bitch. Sure. Yeah. I've, I've wanted to stab a bitch or <laughs> right. stab a Mitch. If you will. <laughs> right, right. But then also domesticity. So sometimes when they don't have a strong sort of rapport there. Yeah. It can be that sometimes it's, you know, on one hand, it can be that people just have different routines where yeah. they like one person really likes to wake up early or. Mm -hmm. They, they're very particular about how they clean or yeah. they, you know, they're, they're, there's that. <laughs> there's so spot it, on. <laughs> <laughs> but it also can represent that there's there can be challenges around your families. Oh. So like in the sense that like, let's say like you're like, his mom's a fucking bitch. Yeah. And, but. Maybe, I yeah. don't think that. I was just with her all weekend. She's so <laughs> no, lovely. No, but I'm using that as an example. Yes, Those yes, are the yes. kinds of things that can happen. Yes. When we see, because. The sun represents the father, yeah. as well as strong mm, masculine energy sure. in the chart. But the moon always represents the mother oh, as well. Oh. So that's why, like, let's say that his moon is afflicted and it's not working with yours. Mm. 
that can show that there might be some friction between that. Uh, so it's very complex when we are looking into those kinds of things. Yeah. But the other things I have here is the thing that I love the most about this rapport is that you can tell that not only is there a lot of mutual support and emotional connection, mm -hmm. but there's a strong friendship between you yes. as well. Yeah. And I like this because you both can help one another grow, but you also know how to build a lasting connection. Yeah. Part of this connection that is so fun is that you both push each other to step out of your comfort zones, but you don't compete with each other. Yes. So that's a, that's another thing that I was seeing, and I was like, okay, I love this. Yes. And then it also just showed that he eagerly really does wish to see you succeed. Oh. And he wants to be instrumental with that because of the way that he links to your career. Oh. And so I give you, drum roll. <gasps> yes. An eight out of 10. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. it. Yeah. So does that does that resonate? Yeah, does that, that does resonate. It totally does. Absolutely. The communication stuff, you know, because mostly what I've read is like Pisces is sensitive and Aries, if you can stop being an asshole, like this could work, you know, which is <laughs> well, pretty on, on point, you know. Well, but it's more complicated than that. Yeah. You know, so and and the thing is that, I mean, you're, you both have, have air sign rising signs. Yeah. You're a Libra rising. Yeah. You're a Gemini rising. Yeah. That works really well. Great. And also your moons are or not your moon. Um. Your, oh yeah, your moons are both in water. Water, there. yeah. So, and the way that they're they're literally interacting. I mean, you could have, you know, someone with the same element as your moon or yeah. sun, but they may be on different areas of the spectrum, sure. and so they may not actually be in conversation. Yeah. With someone else's planet or luminary, yeah. so that's why again. I am looking at the, the nuances yeah. and the, the degrees and all of that yeah. and saving all of that so I don't have to go into it for everyone else. Sure, sure, sure. But that was my breakdown. I mean, that's really what it came down to. I love so. it. Well, great. Yeah. I love that. Sounds better than what most of the like astrology.coms have given us. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Now, I did ask you to uh, mm -hmm. crunch the numbers on another union uh, that is, I think, just as on the table as me and Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see after this breakdown. <laughs> so, so I asked you. Just don't tell. Uh, I actually. I, yeah. <laughs> I almost I was almost gonna say something. Sorry, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I asked Kyle because I was so curious to crunch the numbers on me and Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> my hall pass slash crush since I was 11. Uh, I'm obsessed with him. You guys know I have a Titanic tattoo. You know how it goes. Um, you so do? I do. Where? It's new since I saw you last. I have a heart of the ocean. Oh, that's really cute. It's cute, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out. I was out. just hoping it wasn't this like big Titanic yeah, sinking in just, your vagina or something, you know? It's just, <laughs> it's just like, ship like, sinking. Capsized. You yeah. know, like <laughs> swooping on. He's like That's a really gross frozen, image. falling into my <laughs> vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like a shout out to Endry Stymus who did this beautiful tattoo. I love, but I was just sort of imagining like the action, the whole ship just sinking. Yeah, and then like the people are falling into your. <laughs> no, he's. he's yeah, that's sinking. a really awkward image. Right? He's sinking. Yeah, right? with, he's sinking with one arm down your yeah. one of your thighs. Yeah, yeah, save me! <laughs> Never let go! <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. I, I love it. It's okay, funny. so what is it looking like for me and Leo? We got eight out of ten with Mitch, so. You know, right. And I currently live with Mitch and am a long-term relationship with Mitch. So let's see. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. All right. What is written in the stars for Justine and Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> Leonardo, Di Leonardo DiCaprio is a Libra rising. <gasps> compatible. Oh, wow. Scorpio sun. Mm -hmm. Compatible with your mm -hmm. moon. And a Libra moon. Wow. This couple is off the charts. <laughs> you have so much aligned. This is a power couple to the max. <laughs> I'm giving these bitches a 10 out of 10. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Leonardo's moon is opposite your sun. That's a really strong, powerful connection. Wow. So that synergy always denotes significant partnership. Yeah. Friendship, business, whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, Leo's moon is united with, uh, or Leo's sun is united with your moon. Yeah. So they're really close together. Wow. So that that's also a really strong soulmate sort of vibe. Right. Uh, there's uh. just so much ability to to build closeness, be nurturing, and experience warmth between you two. Between okay. you two. Your Mars and Venus signs are also aligned, <gasps> and this would be a very powerful match because of that. Your charts aligns also how there be massive growth to your career, not his. Wow. I mean, obviously. <laughs> just sink his I mean, like, no, but obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm no, not even joking. Yeah. The way his chart is actually interacting with you, it, it, it would be sort of just like, bam, you would he would lift you to power. Wow. You well, can see how that works. He does and, do that. You know, we've seen it. Right. We've seen him do that. Yeah. You know? I mean, but you can see that in people's charts. Yeah. And then, uh, 
the last thing I will say though is, however, the energy here does show that there could be some competitiveness Ooh. and issues around control, Ooh. if not working in alignment. Most of them would be on his end, okay. But it would also trigger you because certain relationships do that. You yeah. know, you. It's 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 kind of the thing where it's like someone you may have you know, someone that pushes their buttons in a certain way yeah. or someone that turns them on in a certain way. Sure. And that's how compatibility it can be. It can be in a really positive way yeah. or it can be in a way that causes you to experience different sort of maybe negative or challenging emotions or sure uh, ex interactions, you know? Yeah. I mean, think about all those terrible pieces of shit exes, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, been there, oh, done that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about him. Right, right. Dump him, right? <laughs> that is that is such a mood right now. Yeah, it is a mood. I want to be a meme. You should be. Someone make him a meme, Someone make please. me a fucking meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is incredible news. <laughs> I mean... I, I I don't know what to say. It's so unexpected. Like, it's just so nice to be nominated, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is crazy, though. I have, no joke, yeah. always felt, since I would, like first saw him in the trailer for Romeo and Juliet, an insane connection with this person. Well, so here's the thing. Yeah. This, this has been studied, and I've been looking into this for several years as sure. well, is that typically when we have someone that we just really relate with, mm -hmm. or we are a big fan of, or we really like, yeah. It's because we have similar placements. Interesting. In, yeah. <gasps> and so we there's just like an intuitive level or they represent themselves in yeah. a similar way. And you're you're both Libra risings. Yeah. And so there is this degree of of that Libra energy that's permeating from who, who you both are. Right. Um and also, like I said, you know, I mean you have you're on that Aries and Libra polarity. Yeah. With your sun sign and with his Libra moon, so that's on yeah. the player. So there's there is a, a draw to there, yeah. you know. And I, with me, I mean, granted, like I'm an Aries rising, and and I have other placements that could be compatible with his. I haven't been as you know big of a fan as him, although I think he's one of the most brilliant artists alive, right? You know, so. It's like, for instance, I couldn't figure it out with Selena Gomez. I was like, why am I obsessed with her? Interesting. Yeah, and I'm not as obsessed with her anymore. Right. I, mean, I still admire her career and I right. think she's brilliant. But there was just so many times when yeah. she was like first coming out, I was like, what is it? What is it? And I ran her, her chart with mine and I was like, oh, that's what it is. Like oh. we're super aligned. And and so I'm drawn to her music. I'm drawn to her art. Right. Like, and, and that's why, I mean, if she and I were ever to become good friends or something, I feel like we'd both be like, oh, cool. You yeah. know, like there again, there that'd be sort that sort of rapport. And also I wouldn't be like fangirling over her. Right. I've worked with so many celebrities at this point in time that it's just kind of like, OK, yeah, you know, but you get it. yeah. Yeah. So, but <gasps> I but I still think she's brilliant. And yeah, I mean, but again, I'm like, think of other celebrities. Like, yeah. who who do you love? Oh, I'm sure there's something there. Well, who else do I really like? Like, oh, Margot Robbie. I am obsessed with Margot yeah, Robbie. Yeah, she's super, super cool. Yeah, she's so cool. And there's just I'm something. I don't know her son's side. I, I think I did her. No, I I thought I write, wrote about her for people. I can't think about it. She right. is. That makes perfect sense, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, it's the whole thing of, like, like attracts like like there's something in that person exactly. that you're picking up on well and also another thing that's that's really crucial is you can also look at it as the zeitgeist too yeah. so you know there may be some certain like nodal changes or there may be certain planets that's why i mean like granted i mean taylor swift is iconic beyond everything at this point mm -hmm. in time but a lot of the people that are around her age all have the same placements as her. And so we're all as a generation that we're tied to Pluto and Scorpio. Yes. And we have Saturn and Sagittarius. Oh. And we have Uranus and Sagittarius. So I'm not making this up. You can literally chart it. That's why zeitgeist situations and artists and people everyone is drawn to them because they're exhibiting that energy pretty prominently. That is so interesting because just this week after the Grammys, um, I've been talking with some friends about, you know, Taylor and the chokehold that she has everyone in. <laughs> and I have said this on this podcast. I, I respect her. I don't identify as a Swifty myself. And I've just been trying to be like, what is it about her? I mean, you know, let's, we can use this to transition into the next couple we're going to be talking about, yeah, yeah. but Beyonce <clears throat> uh, and Jay-Z were at the Grammys and Jay-Z said Beyonce has never won album of the That's year. Wild, yeah. Taylor has won four times. Yeah. It makes no sense. The fact that Beyonce didn't win for Lemonade is like 
insane to, to be, me. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. That album was incredible. It was incredible. The yeah. visual al- al- album element of it, yeah. like she redefined what you can do with music and with with putting out an album and and how to yeah. you know express yourself in that way. Even Adele, who beat her for her yeah. album that year, said, "What the fuck does Beyonce yeah. need to do to get album of the year?" So it is interesting to me, um, you know what Taylor has because I. I like some of her songs, yeah. but I'm not as obsessed as everyone else is. Well, backtracking it for a second yeah. with the Beyonce, though, is that I think that this reminds me of a conversation that I had with some uh, teachers and professors yeah. in, in college. And they they were saying that it's like certain sometimes when people are awarded. Yeah when you already know that their greatness is even more beyond yeah. where they are, so they cast them in early shows or they're awarded early things, they stop working. Yeah. And so they stop trying to fight. Oh. And so I think that what Beyonce represents is is even greater yeah. than, you know, what she's trying to to currently be seen as building. You know, yeah. she's not just a pop artist. She is she's she's a revolutionary in what she's doing. And that's right. why I think that you, you, I mean, obviously, I don't know the you know yeah. the, the people that are awarding these 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 kinds of things. I mean, maybe I do, but um, the it, it's that kind of thing where it's like I feel like it's like we want more from you. Yeah, like we want we know what you are. We right. know oh. your greatness is so powerful. Like you can do it more. Is so iconic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is so you know br- brilliant. And and the thing that I think that is different different between if we look at you know Taylor and Beyonce is I yeah. mean obviously they 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 sing different stuff and there are different kinds of artists right but i think that taylor has sort of captivated the, the i mean certainly the millennial zeitgeist yeah and i mean pretty much you know you mean every young one at this point even gen z and everything yeah but i think it's the kind of thing where it's like it rallies people to a cause where i think a lot of boomers and such didn't see mm-hmm. us as actually uniting in something mm. so because there, I mean, there was a lot of like apathy and right. and people haven't been you know fired up to sure to believe in something. Yeah, and I and I think that that is something that is really powerful that she can do is she yeah. is helping people to to believe in love. Yeah, and dumping him. Yeah, dumping him. You know, you know, but it's yeah. but there's there's this this also that aspect of like female empowerment which they're also doing in different ways. Yeah, they are doing which, it in very different ways. You know, I mean, we could talk about this forever. Yeah, but, but anyways, but yeah, yeah. So that's just my, sort of my like thoughts. Yeah, even outside of a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but that is interesting, just because the millennial and the connection of all the planets, because she yeah. really does just the power she has is unreal. Um, it's so wild. Yeah, it's really crazy. So, Bay and Jay, though, like to me, the ultimate power couple. You know, they're so good, and they've weathered some storms. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, so, you can see that in their chart too. Oh, really? Well, yeah. and I was so happy to see, like, after they went through everything they did with, you know, him cheating and everything, that he could stand up there and like stand up for his girl in that way. Like, it was really cool to me, you know. And also, I fucking agree with him, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, it's Beyonce. She would literally take a saw and just chop off his nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, it's she's she's. I mean, granted, I feel like he's more powerful probably in business in yeah. certain ways. Mm-hmm. But as an artist yeah. and as a, 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 a cultural and global phenomenon, yeah. she holds that. Yep. And there is no other Beyonce. Right. There's never going to be another Beyonce yep. in the way that she is right yeah. now. And, you know, I, again, we could break down in her chart specifically. But in, when it comes to their Valentine's compatibility, yes. <laughs> uh, let's talk about that. So Jay-Z is a Sagittarius sun <laughs> okay. with a Libra moon. And Beyonce is a Virgo sun with a Scorpio moon. Okay. Of course, that bitch has a Scorpio yes, moon. Yes, she is. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, me. and again, That's I love. That's actually a very challenging placement. Really? Oh, yeah. It's one of, because the moon is, it doesn't do well there. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah. Because the moon is, it's exalted in Taurus. So oh. it's the best in Taurus. Oh. And it works really well in, in Cancer. But what? anyone that has a Scorpio moon, it doesn't mean you're cursed. <laughs> But it just represents that your emotions are so deep and so intense yeah. and all or nothing. But the moon is supposed to be like a flowy energy right. and, and and a sensual energy. And 
scorpion wounds will just stab you. Yeah, I will. St- I will stab you. You know. Um, yeah. But that makes sense. Back to what you were saying, because I love Beyonce. Like she's one of my <laughs> top top. It's like yeah. Britney, Beyonce, Madonna are like my top. Oh yeah. Three pop stars, and it makes sense that we have the same moon sign. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Totally. So my breakdown for them is, to be honest, when you first look at the compatibility between these two, it kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit okay. because you wouldn't necessarily think like, oh, their sun signs are compatible. And again, compatibility is more powerful mm-hmm. and profound than just looking at a sun sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they all, they obviously have a super special connection because of the way that they their charts fit together. And it's sort of like clicks, you know, like if you think of like uh, a map or like, you know, just a, a yeah, it just sort of clicks, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's like they were strong and perfect on their own. Okay. But by aligning, they're they're able to be so much greater. Mm-hmm. They also have many of their planets that align exactly, which is super important. Yeah. Like both of their individual Venuses link with the other person's Mars. Venus is love. Mars right. is passion and sure. sex. And then their Mars each individually also aligns to the other person's Neptune, which is the higher vibration of love, spirituality, soulmates, and art. And so that's why it's just, there's so much going on there. And then as I was breaking down even further in their connection, their communication is one of their greatest connections. Yeah. One of their greatest powers. And I really do think that they have a psychic rapport. Yeah. And so because of all the way that these things layer, you know, even though there is friction, like their sons are very, very tense with each other wow and and, but the thing about it is when you have two forces that are different Uh and working together and bound together there's going to be a lot of creativity and fire sure but there's also a lot of ability for growth yeah and so that's why again you know they're they're always going to have their ups and downs and it didn't shock me when they you know certainly made them public yeah but also they both were like well let's make money on it yeah you know like let's but 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 beyond just making money on it it's a human situation in relationships to have ups and downs yeah. and the dynamics of love or loss or cheating or mm-hmm. infidel, all of these kinds of things. Right. At some point in time, we will deal with them, whether that's in a romantic or, or friendship relationship. Sure. So, yeah, I just think that it's their, their connection is so strong. I, I also give them a 10 out of 10. Wow. Even though, because the thing is, even though the, the it, usually I wouldn't give them the 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. because I think that some of the other stuff is a little bit, little rocky, but everything else makes up for it because it's like exact degrees. Wow. It's so perfectly like precise that I'm like, okay, well, yeah. I mean, it's just every, it's just everything overwhelmingly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So there is there. So they're a ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Mitch are an eight out of ten. Me and Leo are a ten, 10 out, out of ten. Of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> funny. I love it. All right. <laughs> Well, that makes perfect sense. I mean, everything with the tension between, I mean, it feels yeah. like that probably because they, they're they both at the top of their game. So oh, yeah. like they probably kind of like that challenge a little yeah. bit. You know, they keep each other on their toes Yeah. because everyone around them is probably like a yes person, you know? So yeah. the fact that they have that, it keeps things interesting. So that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to another. Who's next on our list? Hot new couple, <laughs> Gigi Hadid and Bradley Cooper. They have been. There were whispers that they were getting together. Yeah. Then you know, because she was kind of with Leo. Apparently, she and Leo weren't a ten out of I ten. I called that shit instantly. Really? It's, oh yeah. I think did we not talk about it? We may have. This was they started dating. Was it during it was during Venus retrograde or something like I that? I feel like we maybe and, did talk about and it. And I literally like everyone was screaming about them. Everyone mm-hmm. was like, "Oh my god, this is gonna last!" And I was like, "Plus, I know things." But yeah, uh, no, this yeah. is not gonna last. Yeah, I was like, "They're they're probably gonna go on a couple dates, and that's about it." Yeah, like and they're that's that's it. Just to sort of say they did. Yeah, and and that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. Um. So what are we thinking? You know, a couple months later, she's dating Bradley Cooper, uh, who is, I'm so curious. She's like me. You move on real fast. I know. She's like, bye, bitch. Dump him. Yeah, dump him. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's the name of the episode. Um, So she she dumped Leo, went with Bradley. I I mean, to be honest, I'm sure he dumped her. I know. She's 27. We know. I'm sure he was like, he was like, oh, yeah. He's like, like, yeah. Spider webs up in that. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> it's real old, you know. Oh like. <laughs> my god, the twenty-seven. Get her to the nursing home, you know. Um, okay, yeah, I'm like the crypt keeper to Leo at this <laughs> point. You know, but we're ten out of ten. <laughs> Your vagina screaming. Yeah. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Okay. It's so, it's so awkward. So, so they they are over. Bradley, we thought maybe it was he and Irina were like taking trips together. Yeah, Irina, yeah, yeah. That, that was his ex, right? Yeah, his ex. Yeah. And then she was with Tom Brady. It's all very just hot people fucking and tra- <laughs> training partners, and I'm here for it. I cannot wait to, wait to be one of them. I know, me too. Right? right? Let's get a, I mean, it, it, assuming Mitch and I don't work out, you know. <laughs> but okay, so everyone settles down. And we've now settled. I thought maybe Bradley would be another just kind of fling but it seems they've been photographed holding hands they've yeah. done a couple you know i don't think they've made an official public appearance but they have been photographed showing pda so what is in the stars for these two to be honest like as soon as i saw that they were starting to see each other i was like oh this i think this will work really and i hadn't even looked at their charts until wow. today <laughs> and but there was just something that i was like there it feels comfortable and i mean i i do have psychic ability yeah and i think we all have psychic ability yeah. and so we can read into things but yeah. the thing that i like so much about astrology is that we, i i marry it with everything else and i'm like okay well this is why i'm seeing something or, or feeling something and Excuse me. The there there there's so much compatibility between them. Granted, you know we we don't have excuse me their rising signs completely aligned or produced. Like Bradley's is just his birth time's not listed. Yeah. And also one thing I will say is a lot of the times with celebrities when they have their birth times listed online, it's wrong. Right. Compared to when I'm actually working with them. That makes sense. And so, I mean, it's nice that people try to track it down, but again, it's it's you can't totally. put everything yeah. on that. Uh, but let's dive into, into them. So Bradley Cooper is a Capricorn sun with a Libra moon. Mm-hmm. And Gigi Hadid is a Taurus sun with an Aquarius moon. And I mean, it wouldn't shock me if my future husband was that sort of match as well. Yeah. I, I'm a Taurus sun with an Aquarius moon. Mm-hmm. So Gigi and I are the same person. Yes, and, yes um, you are. You could be <coughs> pulling in Bradley pretty soon. <laughs> I'm, he's real straight, but oh, wow. uh, <laughs> he's real straight. But so we obviously, again, you know, there there is more than just looking at the sun sign and the moon sign. But just from those here, they have the same elements of Earth for their sun signs. Yeah. And they have the same elements of air from their moon signs. Okay. And so we, we like that. And what I've written for them is even just looking at these placements for them both, they're really so easily and beautifully aligned. Mm-hmm. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they do stick together for quite a while. Wow. And they have a lot of energy in all of the areas that you need. Especially attraction and passion. I mean, that's hot for them. Hot. Oh, it's it's like yeah, they're uh, super I, super. I just want to be a fly on the wall. Oh while yeah, I'm banging, sure that is you know, real hot. Real hot. And but even in money, communication, and longevity, there you can see that there's a lot of different ways that people align, and they are really compatible there. However, their domestic energy could use some work, but that can be sorted out. So again, when I'm going back to seeing something like that, like if their planets are not uh, working. It, it can be the kind of thing where like someone has kids and then they have to take care of them and the other person's like, well, I don't want to have to do that. You know, mm-hmm. it's, so it's it's just little nuances of these yeah. kinds of things. If people communicate and work through them, any relationship can work, no matter what your sun sign is. Sure. Uh, but the other thing that I have here is that I really love how clearly they can easily trust each other and be emotionally open. Yeah. And that is so important, especially when you're at the top of Hollywood. Right. They really want to connect and be open to one another, and they want to give each other new experiences. Yeah, and I think that that is also really beautiful and and important in a relationship that you know you want someone that's not going to like you know challenge you constantly all the time and right. make you feel like you're less than. Right. But also kind of push you into that that new horizon. Uh, there is a little back of back and forth between the play uh, that goes with them, but in honesty, it just feels like it's really comfortable and easy. I love it's that. It's the kind of thing where I feel like they can probably just wear pajamas, and they're like, "This is great. The whole world is like begging for us to be outside <laughs> and 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 take a photo." But like, I just kind of like want to order in and chill with you. Like yeah. that's and that's the thing that I think is so really cute about yeah. them. And there is something that I thought was really interesting though, is okay. because of the the. You know, the large age difference that is going on here. Yeah, because what is... <clears throat> it's about it's 20 years. 20 years, okay, yeah. Roughly, I think it's, it might be 18 or something yep. like that. So Uranus is the planet of chaos and rebellion. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is... It, their, their, their Uranuses, both of them, are square, which means that they're in a tight angle. Mm. And more often than not, that only really happens if you are obviously having a larger age 
gap between people. Oh. And so that can be something that can be challenging because it's like they both have their own perspectives of the world. They, they're they they're part of different age demographics. They've grown up in different places. Right. And so that can create some sort of just very different perspectives. Like I said, it's just the kind of thing, well, I, you know, like I don't understand social media that way or yeah. I don't know, like if I feel that way about how the world works. Right. But because there is such strong compatibility to them in the trust and the being able to like, like, you know how, I mean, I'm sure you have this. Like it's when you just, you just like, you can just touch someone and it's just, you're just comfortable. Yeah, totally. And like, and then like that's the stuff that I like love and the miss, yeah. like the miss the most when I'm single. Yeah. It's just like, just like, you know, like cuddling up and be just like, oh. Yeah, and you don't you have, know. yeah, you don't have to put on this like facade. Just, you can just be you and exactly. be comfortable and be present. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm, that's sort of what I feel like I'm building with the, the guy that I'm oh, kind of seeing now. Okay. Like, yeah, like it's like, it's like, it's cute. And I feel like it can go somewhere. Yeah. But we also have sparks. And, yeah. and again, that's, you know, that's what I look at when I'm looking at the the, the vastness of, of, sure, of a relationship. Sure, sure, sure. So for, for them, I do give them an eight out of 10 compatibility as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. But I do, I actually think that they're going to, they have potential to really last. Yeah. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, well, especially from the way that the planets are right now, I think now would they get married? I mean, I would have to really look further on down the line. Yeah. I don't think either of them have gotten married. They both had kids, but I don't, yeah. I don't think either. No, no, no. She, uh, wasn't she with Zayn She Malik? was with him, but I don't think they ever got married. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I don't think they got married. I think they just had the kid. And I think he's he... A, I'm pretty sure he's a Capricorn, too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zane. I, I wrote it, yeah. He's hot. I think Zane is so hot. Um, well, I mean, he, like... No? Are you more of a hairy guy? Uh, but he's also... I'm not really into young guys that are younger than me. I'm like, yeah. oh, gross. Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, he's not even that much younger than me, which is really sad. I thought he was way younger. That's funny. He's only like a couple years younger. Th my <laughs> friend, uh, he's thirty-one. I guess I would probably swipe. You know, if you swipe. On. Well, I mean, on my Tinder at this point in time, like I think thirty-two is, which is still just a couple years younger than me. I just like want someone that's like gone through their shit. Yeah, I get it. But you know, to me, like I would, yeah, if I weren't in a relationship, I would go up to like maybe ten years younger. <laughs> Ten, for d dating for me, I mean, maybe for banging, but <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, again, it's, I've like, I've upped it even like, oh, I, I got, I, I did got rid of t Raya. Cause oh, I was, you did? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like fun for a while and yeah. like you'd see some celebs on there and stuff and I was like, whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, again, I feel like. So it's 32 is your. Yeah. I mean, I would mm -hmm. say probably like 32. Unless and you're then, Zane, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I did recently go on a date with a 30 year old and that was fine. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess, but same thing, even the thing with like older than me, I think that I'd probably, I would actually probably go l a little bit older than, than younger. Than younger. Mm -hmm. Because when they're younger, they don't have money. <gasps> That's they don't true. have their shit together. Yeah. They like, no. And also older, like Aye. you get to be the hot one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which is like what I really want. <laughs> I'm just always trying to be the hot one. You're always, you're right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. if they're younger, you're kind of like, oh, I'm like, you know, if it's like a decade kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you know, Leo, even though he dates 25 year olds, like I'd still be, he's still like 11 years older than me. Still love him though. 10 out of 10. Still. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because I feel like I, I don't know. I like, I would still give him a chance if he was like sniffing around, you know? Leo? Yeah, of course. Oh, I make it, if, <laughs> if I didn't have a wonderful boyfriend who I love so much, <laughs> I would absolutely give him a chance, a thousand percent. I'm yeah. just saying like, I you like since we're t 11 years younger, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and he's like, I'm Leo, I don't need to give a shit about what I really do or look like, you know, yeah. I can just fucking hang out on a yacht and b be me and not, you know, whatever. I uh, I think it's like, oh, then, you know, we could be the, the hot little pieces, you know? Yeah. I mean, not as hot and little as his, like... Well, you have to take me on your yacht with yeah, you. We'll with take me. you. We'll take yeah. you on the yacht. <laughs> it's, it's uh, so I, I swap readings with other celebrity psychics sometimes just for fun. We do yeah. it like every year. And I've had a couple different psychics tell me that I'm gonna get married twice. And you can look in a chart and you can see those kinds of things. Like, yes, I mean, if, if I'm analyzing a certain way of looking at my chart, I could, there's a possibility. Sure. Uh, but it says that the, that the first marriage will be someone that's re relatively my age. And then the second one will be someone that's a little bit older. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, I want to I want to get some of these chart readings. Well, again, I can do those kinds of things, but I also feel like it's not necessarily always helpful. Yeah. Because it's like me looking at someone's chart and saying, you're never going to be successful. Yeah. Or you're never going to find love or you're not going to find love until later in life. Yeah. I just feel like that kind of reading, no matter if it's an astrology reading or a psychic reading, it takes away your power. Yeah. And and that's why like I love looking at the the way the planets are moving now and yeah. compatibility and using it in a way to empower ourselves rather than be limited by it. So I, totally because I also think yeah. when you get that in your head, exactly. it can end up being like a self fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know. So <clears throat> so I think that's the danger yeah. <clears throat> with the, with leaning too much on those things. You know, on yes. those kinds of things. I think also always following your own intuition. Yeah. And then having those complement that um, and like kind of help guide you. Yeah. Well, because when I am doing readings with with people no matter like where they live on the world or what level they're at the way that i try to always approach it is again trying to be like all right well you're gonna see opportunities for love at this point in time yeah. and, and 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 for all zodiac signs that are that are watching this you should check out my predictions on my website i have love predictions for the whole year okay so yeah. and i also do love readings so yeah guys hit him up he's so good obviously he just <laughs> got a swoop swoop that is yeah exactly no seriously he is the best <laughs> Uh, Leo and I are 10 out of 10, right. you know, I mean, really. And that's, I know, spot on. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to meet him, you know. Let's just, just make it happen. Uh, and, you know, if if Mitch and I, again, we're not extremely happy and, uh, and, and loving where we're at. Okay. So our last couple, actually, it was kind of like a last minute ad on the way over here. Oh, that one, yeah. But that's why I was like, wait, which one? Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we were on the car car ride on the way over here because we're neighbors and we carpooled because we're cute. Um, I Saving the trees. Yeah, saving, saving the trees, saving the environment. Yeah. Uh, in the Prius, he hopped in. <laughs> I, obviously, on my mix, Cry Me a River came on, uh, Justin Timberlake, and I was like, this is such a good song. And Still then, so iconic. So good. Like, I'm sorry, you guys know I'm a huge Britney stan. I love Britney, but that song is a banger. And it's, you know, we need to celebrate it, okay? He's we, so talented. He's yeah. so talented. I don't, I, his new songs are okay. I haven't gotten as into them. To me, peak Justin is him and Timbaland, you know? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So, uh, but then we started talking. Like talk Sexy Back? So, oh, Sexy Back. That whole, that, yes. That era was All of just it. so everything. So good. Yeah. But, I mean, Cry Me a River, like, the beat, the fucking song. I mean, the video is wild, I will say. And, you know, he, look, he did what he had to do. But we, <laughs> again, we... <laughs> We know more now, and it's unfortunate how it all unfolded. But I did ask you in the car about some of the more recent things that have been happening. So Justin released his new single, Selfish. Britney, the Britney stands, myself included, all we all did our due diligence and streamed her old song, Selfish, <laughs> from her Femme Fatale album and got it to beat Justin. Savage. It was pretty savage. <laughs> I mean, I was doing it, but I, you know. Like just over and over and over. Oh, and no, over. over and over. And then I did, I did sneak one of, I was like, I do want to hear it. But then I did like Britney's 10 <laughs> 20 times. 20 more times. times. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we did that. Oh, my God. Then Britney came out and was like, I'd like to say sorry to anyone I may have hurt in my book. And also I am in love with Justin's new song, Selfish. And the other one, I think it's called like, sanctify or something that that one's a banger too i haven't listened to that one but um that one's great too and then justin came out and he was playing a, a I think a private event and but right before he played cry me a river he said i'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to f absolutely fucking nobody which it was like whoa shots fired and then britney came out and posted and i'm sure all these are deleted now but she posted <laughs> a picture of a basketball hoop and was like, basically like, let's settle this on the court, Justin. The court meaning the basketball court. She's not taking him to like a court of law. And like, I hope you don't go crying to your mom when you lose like you did last time. And they did, they were known to shoot some hoops back in the day together. So what is your take on all of this? And what what were their charts like together? Were they a good match? Well, I did do a breakdown for People Magazine. So luckily I had this, you know, at, yes, just at my beck and call. Oh, or at your beck and call. You were like, you. bring him up, you bring know? It. Yes. And so we do know, know right off the bat that Justin Timberlake is an Aquarius sun Which, with a Sagittarius you know, moon. You know how we feel about Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> with a Leo rising. But as I was saying before, mm -hmm. In the car, I actually feel like he and I, because of some of the placements, I do think that he and I would get along really well. Okay. And again, we're like, he's straight. It's not like we'd be dating or anything. Right. So it 
yeah. But again, I just think that there would be a synergy between the way our charts do align. Sure. And the thing that we have here with Brittany is that, hold on. She is, where did I do it? Britney Spears is a Sagittarius sun with an Aquarius moon. Okay. And I think she's a Libra rising. For some reason, I didn't write that down. Anyways, it doesn't matter I'm right now. I'm pretty sure she is because I remember being like, oh, she's also a Libra rising. I'm pretty rising. sure she's a Libra yeah. rising. But uh, yeah, so basically, as I as I did this breakdown for People Magazine, I was really diving into like, are they true loves? And you can see things like that in the regards to like how people's relationships develop. Sure. And so what I have for them is... First off, the connection between Justin and Brittany was a soulmate connection. Wow. And the reason I do know that is because their nodes, which are tied to their destiny, mm -hmm. are interacting mm -hmm. in their compatibility. Okay. So you know this is a very powerful and life-changing relationship for them. Yeah. And like I said, I could see that with me and other people. May I may have dated or a pet, et cetera. You can always see this in a strong, powerful connection. Yeah. I give them an 8 out of 10 as well. Okay. And it's not just because I like eight inches out of ten, <laughs> but it's uh, it's again, it's the I, I really do feel like there's there's a lot of love and passion that that was there. There okay. was a lot of opportunities around money and career, and communication and areas for growth. And they also had connections around home and family. Okay, in some better ways than we've also said with other people. Sure. And you know, so we do know that there is that, but there's also another big focus in their chart that does represent power struggles, power struggles around power control and intimacy. And a lot of that is actually triggered by Justin's chart. So when I was talking oh. earlier about how relationships can sometimes bring something out of you like yeah. it can make you make someone can make you feel sexier or yeah. someone can make you feel smarter, or happier, or more successful, whatever. Yeah. His chart does speak a lot of that. And so I feel like what her chart is a little bit more chaotic and we love Brittany and I have nothing bad to say about her and but her show was called uh Brittany and Kevin chaotic yeah 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 so she's so had she has she's had aspects in her chart that are always there mm -hmm. and so we know that that is going to be something that's always present yeah but I think that also not only do the people that she's surrounded herself with but within him mm -hmm. also triggered these kinds of things okay so she was rebelling you know, she she wanted freedom. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be independent, do her own thing. And when you are so controlled all the time, sometimes you do want to just break free. I mean, right. look at any teenager. Look at a puppy that's in a cage all day. Right. And you know, not not saying that she's a dog, but again, just like thinking about it in that sort of tonality. Anyone mm -hmm. anyone that is kept in a box for too long is going to wonder what's out there. Sure. And you know, again, but going back, their 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 sons are really aligned. There's there's a lot that shows here around building long term wealth, long term term energy. Their moons are so connected. It's just there was so much beauty between them. I think when it was really good. Yeah. And but they were also so young. Yeah. And and that's why again, you know, I think that had things been different mm -hmm. and had certain people made different decisions, mm -hmm. I think that they probably could have lasted forever. Yeah. And Again, you know, but do I think that is like they are true loves for each other? No, but I do think that they're soulmate connections. Okay. And we have multiple soulmate connections in our lifetime. My, like I, my puppy is one of them for yeah. me. Like I literally can see it in his chart. So yeah. that's why, again, I just do think that like they were meant to fall in love. They were meant to be in each other's lives. They mm -hmm. were meant to change each other's lives. But because we do have free will and we can co-create with the universe, mm -hmm. it allows us to carve that path out and obviously yeah. they didn't want to go back after it was burnt out yeah I mean it's funny because on the way over here I was talking about how I always felt like they were very meant to be mm -hmm. and just deep down in my soul I was like it it was so crazy when they broke up and I I said you know it was kind of like it reminded me of back to the future too <laughs> when you know one tiny change yeah, yeah, yeah. affects you know in 1955 affects the, the next three decades and then we're in this bad weird 1985 and back to the future too we're like you know biff is the man yeah. and it's just really bad and i feel like just you know like you said that one kiss with a, a choreographer you know it just changed the course of pop romance history yeah i mean again i, I but i i we all we all have choices to make yeah and he chose not to forgive her yes and I, 
And again, and she's. It, but I'm. But the thing is, I'm sure that there was either other stuff going on behind the scenes too. Well, of course and we know that now. Yeah, that yeah. he was also cheating on her. There was, according there to her was all sorts of back and there forth. There was a know? lot, and she yeah. got all the blame for it. Uh, we're just yeah. pointing to that one tiny thing that is kind of known as the big thing that did break them yeah. up. But yeah, he also made the choice to not, you know, let it go. So. But I do think that had she had he stayed with her, yeah, her life would look very different. Yeah. And I do think that they probably would have lived together and yeah. been together and probably yeah. had kids. And, yeah. You know, do I think that they would have stayed together forever? Probably not. Yeah. I think that there, there are certain relationships and they're karmic in nature mm -hmm. and they they come into your life to change your life. Yeah. And they redirect you. Sure. And you you would never be the same without them. Yeah. And that's what I think is so beautiful about the complexity of human relationships. Yeah. So yeah. there is that. But yeah, unfortunately, we can also turn to a dark place yeah. too from people well it's interesting because it's like compare them to beyonce and jay-z mm -hmm. to like just seem like match made in like music heaven yeah star, you know in the stars and uh you know if beyonce could have easily not forgiven jay-z and taken a totally different this path. is a perfect it's a perfect example yeah exactly yeah. so yeah. but yeah. now look they're fucking he's getting this big grammy award and yeah. you know got her back there and you know she made lemonade we would have never gotten lemonade you know <laughs> can you imagine a world without lemonade no i mean it's, it's such a good piece it's, it's so good, a good piece. it's incredible yeah. okay thank you for all of that of course. so just to recap britney and justin eight out of ten yes Gigi and bradley eight out of ten yes um bay and jay ten out of ten yes uh, me and Mitch, 8 out of 10. Me and Leo, 10 out of 10. I love that me and Leo and Bay and Jay are just... That's what I said. I was like, this is like power couple yes! making, you know? Yes! Okay, I will take it. Although I will say I've been thinking about it this whole episode. Unfortunately, Leo, I've I've got to pick my man, Mitch. He's been there for me. Uh, he's the best. So I think I am going to stick with Mitch and uh, <laughs> and just work on the communication a little bit. <laughs> just, just a little, and the domestic. The, yeah, the domestic and the, yeah, and the domesticity, but, um, which is probably my thing because I'm not very domestic. But uh, thank you so much for that. Before we wrap up, we thought it would be fun to go through and do the best and worst sex matches compatibility you know the signs and i th kyle you're gonna present me with some matches and i'm gonna say whether or not i think this is a good match in the sack correct exactly okay. do you think they are making you come okay great <laughs> like, like <laughs> is it pound town or is it just like snail? or is it drown town <laughs> <laughs> drown town seems like a chick that's just like squirting for a thousand days <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that could be like, good too. Oh my god, it's like the rain we've been having. It's like, yeah, she's like oh my god, drown down. Yes. Oh yeah, Mother Nature was just really hitting it yeah. hard. You know, <laughs> she was just, she was squirting all over the place. Sorry. Oh my too god, much. no, it's great. It's just, just enough. It is just enough. <laughs> I'm gonna present the zodiac signs for best and worst matches in sex to Justine, and she is going to see who she thinks is the hot and not of it. And okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna find out. Okay, so we're gonna start here with Aries. What do we know about Aries? Aries, Aries are fiery. Fire, fiery. Um, first sign of the zodiac. Leaders. Natural born leaders. Exactly. Yes. She's Com learning. She's learning. Competitive. Yes. Right? I know because it's literally just my personality. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to give them a best, who would it be? Aries. Okay. So I know this because I've looked it up for myself. I would say Sagittarius. No. <laughs> the bus <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I love that it just kept going up. <laughs> I was like, did it's I like, run? <laughs> Is there a fire? <laughs> Aries. Um, okay, what about Leo? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. I love it. All right, what's the worst sex for Aries? <laughs> okay, I'm a f I'm s Is it Is it I is, is, is I think it's a water sign. Is it Pisces? Okay, thank God, because that's Mitch. And that would be totally not true, I will say. Could you imagine if I just did that <laughs> to your relationship right now? I, I was like, you guys suck. I like, know, I know. No, but you're you're on the right track. But again, I did tell you a lot of guys I've dated have been Pisces, and there's, you know, been some some great ones in there, especially Mitch. Um so okay, what about Scorpio? No, 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 no. I'm taking that back. I'm taking that. <laughs> I put, you put a Scorpio and an Aries in a room and they're gonna fuck. Come on, you know this. Like, after all the times we talked about, like, know, all we, your, like, like. Me and Leo, 10 out of 10. 
that. Exactly. Sorry, I got nervous. Okay. <laughs> Aquarius? No. <laughs> okay, wait. Hey. Pisces, Scorpio. You got one more chance. There's, I'm telling there's you. one more. What's the other fucking Pisces, Scorpio? What's the other water sign? Um, fuck, this is a hard game. <laughs> Virgo? Cancers. Oh, are, cancer. Cancers are not making Aries cream. Oh, wow. That's true. I, I have fucked a cancer and that is ab absolutely accurate. Right, okay. Right. All right. Next, we're moving on to Taurus. What do we know about Taurus? Uh, grounded, earthy. A uh, bull. <laughs> really good in bed. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. They're, they're really good in bed. I mean, like, like literally always take me to pound town. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if we've got the best for Taurus, who would that be? Ooh. Um, Virgo? Close. <laughs> Close? Okay. 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 Um, okay. Taurus. 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 Um, Capricorn? Also close, but no. Okay, okay. Last try, last try. Fuck, I'm really not great at this. <laughs> okay. Um, Virgo, Capricorn. Taurus is on the polarity of sex. Who else is? Scorpio? Yes. Yay! Yeah, so there's, Thanks for the hint. There's a really strong connection between them. That so, makes sense. Because Taurus is ruled by Venus. Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto. Yeah. And so there's just that... that karmic powerful connection. yeah all right who's the worst for taurus Ooh. oh wait you aquarius technically no oh damn yeah. <laughs> that's just me that's one you. of them though personally although i, I like we, you know i like we said before i was like usually aquarians do not hit it and then that one that one they'll surprise you he did he, but yeah you know whatever okay wait bye bye dump, dump him, him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, so uh, who's the worst for Taurus? Um, They're kind of chaotic. Oh, Gemini? So, close. Oh. Damn it. So close. Uh, Sagittarius? Yes. Okay, really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So technically, the, the sex between Sagittarius and Taurus is very challenging. Okay. Because they're just, the, the what they want and the way that they go about lovemaking is a little bit very different, not yeah. a little bit. It's very different. Yeah. Tauruses are sensual. They're they're very focused on intimacy, and where Sagittarius are like, hit it, quit it. Where now? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go fuck in the woods. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> so there's just a lot of that can be a little bit very that can be that can be challenging. Okay. Great. I mean, I've never had good sex with a Sagittarius that I can think. Of. Really? Uh, I mean, I've been banged to, by a Sagittarius. But. I'm trying to think. I'll have to think. I just, I'll have to go through the Rolodex. We'll talk about that next that time. That could take all day. Okay. <laughs> uh, Gemini's. What do we know about Gemini's? Ooh, two heads. Uh, cha a little chaotic. Uh, I know Gemini's can be a good match for Aries because they're they're fun. Every Gemini I've known, we've like gotten into shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're 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 kind of tricksters. Mischievous. Yeah, they're yes. they're definitely mischievous. So their best sex. Who would that be? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um. Ooh. <laughs> it sounds like you just came, you know? You're just like. <laughs> she's just like, ooh. wear your hands, honey, ooh, you know? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, okay, Gemini. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Aquarius? Close. Okay, okay. Close, but. <laughs> Give me the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> so, By the end of this, people are gonna be like, "God, I hate that noise." I know. I love it. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay. Um, okay. Gemini. Gemini. Two heads. Earth. They're Earth, right? No, no they're, they're air. air. So oh, they're Libra. also Libra. Oh, damn, you're always so you're so close, but they're because they're so chaotic. Who else is so chaotic? Oh, Sagittarius. Yes. Duh! Yes, because they like they're the kind of zodiac signs that like that needs to always be stimulated. Yeah. It always needs to be different. It needs to always be a little bit of a drama. Sure. But they're also probably gonna be the couple that's like keeping it spicy all the time. Yeah. And doing all the crazy stuff that other people aren't. I love that. Yeah, no, I, I mean I I invoke that for them. Yes. Uh who's <laughs> the worst sex for Gemini? Ooh. Because Ge Geminis are all like in their head. Mm. We need to like, you know. What would be like a damp? Wet clam. Cancer? Close. Pisces? Yes! No. I'm sorry. Like, Geminis and Pisces, you know you are not getting hit, like, hit yeah. in the heart. Like, yeah. 
Well, well, because Pisces, yeah, because Pisces is very so sensitive, sensitive, emotional, sens- emotional, really yeah. connected, and yeah, I feel like Gemini is just like, ah, you know. Well, because I mean, the thing about Gemini's is they can bang and they yeah. can do whatever they, <laughs> they, they, they can, they can do it. They want it in every way, and Pisces can be like flexible and into that. They're both mutable, mutable signs, but Pisces want to be held. Pisces yeah. want to snuggle and they want to feel the emotions yeah. and like. That's beautiful, and that works for others for other zodiac signs. But I yeah. feel like after a while, Gemini. That's why I labeled it. It's the worst for Gemini, oh. but it may not necessarily be the worst for Pisces. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. So the matches that I've actually, yeah. Oh, great. I've written articles about this before. I so. love that. Yeah, and I've also had sex with every zodiac. Yeah, you have. So, yeah, you, know. you have. That's why I bring in an expert, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Cancer. Cancers are. Um, the best for the cancers? Well, just in general. I mean, oh, cancers, oh, cancers are in their shell. They're water signs. They're water signs. And also, I always read that like they have a hard shell, but then once you get in there, you're like in for life. You yeah, know, like but yeah. they they're kind of hard to crack. Yeah, no, I love I love cancers. Yeah, uh, they're very domestic. They yeah. really value tradition and home and family. So, who would be the best in that regard for sex for cancer? Ooh, tradition and home and family. Uh. Taurus? Yes. Really? Wow, this is the first one you got yeah. right. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wish there was like a big ding. Yes, you know? like, we should have gotten a ding. <laughs> no ding, just no. bang. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that Cancer and Taurus are really, really compatible. Oh, interesting. Yeah, especially from the Cancer side of things because the Taurus is very, is very sensual, but helps them to ground their emotions. Yeah. And can be really, you know, yeah. it, very tangible. And, sure, and, and sure, 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 sure. So that's sure. really good. All right, so if what's not like that, so what's the worst? Well, sorry, whoa! whoa. Uh-huh. That one was really loud. Wow, hold on. So I'm losing my shit right now. All right, um, so who's the worst for cancer? For cancer, um, Sagittarius. Leo? That, that was a good guess. Leo? Though. No. Aries? <sighs> <laughs> Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. Yeah. Interesting. Because the thing about it is that technically, just the way that they approach sex is just very different. Uh, now, there are ways of looking at compatibility and seeing like technically Aquarius rules Cancer's eighth house, eighth house of sex, but they're not having sex in the way that they. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's more complicated than just looking at the eighth, eighth house. If anybody knows astrology, yeah. By the way, uh, all right. Leos. Leos are. Fiery leaders need to be the center of attention. Um, they're like lions, you know? They want you to fucking look at their mane. They're regal. Yeah, they're regal. We, we love a Leo. I love Leo. I love Leos. So what's the best for Leo? Aries? That's close. Sagittarius? <laughs> Leos? Other Leos? No? None of those? Libras. Oh, Libras. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because the thing about it is that they both are very like show offs in bed. Oh. And oh, so they're trying to like one up each other. Well, it's it's that's really fun, but the thing about it is that they just they're both super romantic. Ah. And so that gets into their lovemaking. And so that's why when I'm making these patches matches, I'm not just like pulling it out. I'm actually aligning the basic traits that are very compatible. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so that's why I made this that's how I made the list. Okay, uh so who's the worst? Worst for, for Leo. Leo. Or, I feel like it's got to be like a water sign, maybe. No. That's a good guess, but technically no. Okay. Um, I'm going to go mm, uh, Virgo. Yes. Ah! Bam. Two out of like <laughs> 18 so far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Moving on to Virgos. Virgos are an earth sign. Okay. And they're like very like ground it get shit done like yes. organized yes. methodical i feel yes. yes yes so what is really great and the best sex for them ooh who else is kind of like that yeah ooh hmm not aries right <laughs> <laughs> that was such a no such a no <laughs> cancer no, that's cancers are yeah. very similar. Uh, Sensitive, domestic, they're lovely. Uh, okay, Virgo, Virgo, Libra, <laughs> Capricorn. Oh, fucking! I forgot Capricorn was a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm She's like, like oh, yeah, because Capricorn. Oh, that makes sense. They're very practical. They're very yes. grounded. They're very realistic. They're both very horny signs. Yeah, Earth signs are actually one of the most sexual zodiac mm, signs. Interesting, because they're the, they rule the body. 
And and so there is this kind of energy where they love to, you know, have long love making sessions yeah. and, and those kinds of things. So, I, you know, no joke. I was like, I know I'm forgetting one. And I my, my other longest relationship other than Mitch was a Capricorn. But I. <laughs> Dumped him. <laughs> Deuce. Yeah, bye. I um, forgot that that sign even existed. <laughs> All right. So who is the worst for Aries then? Or for, uh, for. Or, I'm sorry. Damn it. I just gave it away. Virgos. <laughs> Virgos. Sorry. Your worst is Aries. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. See, yeah. I knew there was something. I That, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, again, because like. You know, Aries is like hit it, quit it. Like they're yeah. if you if you're breaking it down just from like the sexual energy, Aquarius wants to orgasm as quickly as possible. They want to you know yeah dive in, go Let's for get it. it. Done. Yeah, like it's 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 good, it's fun, it's hot. We like it. We know what we like and move on. Yeah. The thing about Virgo is that they want to like they want to they want every little crevice. They want every yeah. little and you know energy of it. They Interesting. want. Interesting. Yeah. So they're very. They are also very methodical, but. They're they're also the, the kinkiest zodiac sign too. Oh, and okay, Virgo. Yeah, because they the way that they kind of look at sex is it's sort of like they, in a sense, it's like they analyze all the details. Yeah, and they they are get sort of like obsessive and fascinated Ooh. by like the different details. Yeah. Also, their their natural seventh house is ruled by Pisces, and Pisces is all about you know that the, the deep sensitive yeah. different places. And what at the end of the day, what is what is kink? It's exploring different levels of it. Yeah. What's going on in your body and yeah. inside of you. So. I love that. Okay, yeah. well, sorry, Virgo. It's not, <laughs> not a match for us, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, moving forward. Okay. Uh, Libras, what do we love about Libras? We love Libras. Uh, airy, like nice, friendly, sweet, fun, right? I love, yeah, I love yeah, a Libra energy. I love a Libra. My mom's a Libra. Yeah. Oh, the the guy that I'm seeing, he's a Libra rising. Oh, nice. And I'm an Aries rising. I haven't, I don't think I've dated a Libra rising before, but I'm really excited to like see how it goes because like he will be mine. Yeah, he will. He will be mine. Wait. Okay. I'm going to say Aquarius. So for best for, for Libra? For Libra. That was a really good guess, but technically again, no. Okay. I guessed it because my dad... <laughs> My dad's an Aquarius, and my mom, like, I, they, I know my mom has said that they're, that's a good match. It's a super good match. Yeah. But it's not the best. Okay, great. So, so think of, like, think of what the, du the duality that they're on. Yeah. So, Libras are all about partnership mm -hmm. and all about, like, back and forth, mm. but they're a cardinal sign. Mm. So, what's also going to be back and forth with them in the same way? Ooh. Gemini? I'm so bad at this. Aries. <laughs> oh, Aries! Really? Yeah, because so that their their duality is all about independence versus partnership. So they both are always tied to it. Even when like even when your Aries loves to be like I'm the leader, I'm you know yeah. doing my thing. They sort of always have a person. That's yes. because they always have a follower. Yes, we were the original Instagram baby. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's that's the thing though. It's, so it, it goes yeah. back and forth. And the thing that I love about Aries and Libra lovemaking is that Libra likes to sort of like play with taking charge. Yeah, and so they're, they're, they they that can go back and forth. Ooh. Yeah, no, it's just it's such a good flow. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, Zachary Levi, watch out. Yeah, no, I know I love that for them. Uh, all right, who's the worst for Libra though? Oh, for Libra. Um, so like, yeah. <laughs> any hint? Because <laughs> I'm so um, bad at this. Wet rags, oh, you know, like. Oh no. Okay, Cancer. Um, Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> Poor Pisces. <laughs> Literally, the majority of the guys I've dated have been Pisces. <laughs> well, I mean, it's again, it, like when I was breaking it down, is that they they both are really connected to Venus, yeah, because they have a strong relation to that planet, so that can make it really romantic and lovely. But also, they both don't want to take charge. Right. They both want the other person to take charge. So if they're both, so it's like two bottoms being bottoms being like, fuck me, yeah, you know, oh, like. That <laughs> <laughs> so lame. This? So lame. I can't. Guys, so. please watch the video because you want this act out of Kyle doing two bottles. I'm sorry, those two buttholes don't go together. Like, two buttholes do not make a so union. Lame. Okay. So lame. So lame. I mean, it's like, I, it's like, it's like putting, yeah. All right. I, I could talk about this for a long time. <laughs> not like I know too much about it, but <laughs> anyways. Okay, great. So, All right, Scorpios. Scorpio. I mean, this is hard because they're so, they are like sex, mm -hmm. they're known as like the sex sign, yeah. right? And emotional, deep, all that kind of stuff. Okay. But they're also kind of like to be in charge. And yeah. so they're like, 
what would vibe with that? Ooh, what would vibe with that? Pisces? Yes! Ah, I got another got one! Got another one. <laughs> but that's why when I was looking at this, I'm, it's not like I'm hating on certain signs. No, It's about how not. it aligns. Yes. So uh, who's the worst for Scorpio who's obviously deep in their emotions and brooding Ooh. and... Capricorn? Cancer? Cancer? Capricorn? Is it a double bu- Is it a double buzz? <laughs> Your face. Yeah. Aquarius. <laughs> oh, Aquarius. Because, yeah, because with Aquarians, they're all in their mind. Yeah. And they want to, like, you know, try different things out. And Scorpio can certainly be kinky. Yeah. But they want that emotional. They want to, like, go to the depths. Yeah. And Aquarius is just like, just fuck me. Yeah. Just fuck me. <laughs> I love it. Just, you know. JFM. Next friends, who, whatever, yeah. you know. I mean, the amount of Aquarian people that I know that are, you know, my friends, they've banged, like, all my friends. Yeah. I'm like, wait. You've all hooked up. Yeah. Everybody in this room has hooked up. I'm like, wow. Yeah. They they get in there. I mean, in except and out. me. But except you. I'm the prize jewel. Yeah, you are. <laughs> You're a Taurus. You can't just let those killer skills go for anyone, you know? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Although I do need to keep them practiced. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, the next here we have a Sagittarius. Okay. And Sagittarians are a fire sign. They're spicy. They're impulsive. Mm-hmm. They're you know spontaneous. Yeah. Who would be really good? For them, Aries. Yes. Yay! She's getting it. She's. She's. I am. she's you know, we're we're at the bottom of the list. We now, are. We're, we're finally. <laughs> it's taken like um, twenty two matches for me to start to get it. Okay, great. That so makes what's sense. the what if they like all of that? What's really bad for them? And like Wait, back at wet rag again. <laughs> uh, okay, so Sagittarius. They're fiery. They're spicy. Cancer. That is also a really good guess. Um. Scorp no Scorpio no, no. I... Pi- Pis- is it Pisces <laughs> is it Tor- it's is Taurus it, is it always Taurus is it, is it always Pisces I know like... I'm like Pisces <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right moving forward we've got Capricorn okay Capricorns are um well there's a lot that's a weighted question based on my experience uh like stubborn yeah, yeah they're they're earth signs they tend to be very ambitious hardworking. They they're very disciplined. Yeah, kind they... of boring. <laughs> <laughs> not that fun. Not that impulsive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I actually I'm saying that with. Now that is a read. That like... is a read for a very specific person. But one of my very best friends, Erica, who has been a guest on Glitter and Garbage many times, is uh, Capricorn, and I love her so much. So that is not a blanket Capricorn <laughs> statement. That is a blanket. A uh, certain person statement. Right. Uh, All right. So who's the best for them? Okay. So Virgo. Close. Okay. Taurus. Yeah. Ah. So Capricorn is is one of the least romantic zodiac signs. Okay. But Taurus is one of the most, and they're mm. also an Earth sign. So basically, when you have a Taurus and Capricorn together, the, the Taurus is always like, "Come on, baby, like yeah. let's be, like, come on, come on, out of that that vibe." And the Taurus or the, the Capricorn's like, "All right, well, yeah. you know." So they like unleash and open, and it's it's such a good. Oh, that's good. Such a good rapport. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've had it many times. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the worst for Capricorn though would be Ooh. someone who's also trying to take control. Aries. Yes. See? That's not a good match. See? And I dated a Capricorn for three years. It's just power struggle. Yes. It's like everybody's just like, you know, it's even in bed. You're just like, do it this way. Do it this way. Yes. Like, and you're, and the other person's just like, I thought I was doing it right. And yeah. And you're just finally just like, just, just come. Just that that is on. so accurate. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> to a T. Just get it over with. Just, you let's know? just fucking like, finish. You yeah. know, like, thanks. Great. I'm yeah. going to shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, next. <laughs> as, you, as you, like, grab yeah. your, like, computer and you're yeah, like. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got some work to porn do. Porn Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the bathroom. So funny. Suddenly he's like, what's that loud buzzing yeah. noise? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, sorry, just the, you know, nothing. Sorry, it's Kyle's app. <laughs> <laughs> if a, if a sex toy did this all the time. <laughs> That's so a certain wild. kink. That is a certain kink. See, but would it sound if it was inside of you? Oh, that would be funny. It like oh. the vibrate. <laughs> I, we need to make that happen. It's, there's some bitch who this would, th- that would get her off for sure. <laughs> I listen to glitter gar- that yeah, glittery yeah. garbage dump him episode all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> it's my king. <laughs> right. All right, Aquarius, moving on. Aquarians are the water bearer. They're not actually a water sign. They're an air sign. Okay. 
they're ruled by Uranus, so they're very eccentric. Uh, they're they're spontaneous as well. When they get into a place where they like to explore, mm -hmm. but once they set their mind on something, they can be pretty rigid. Yeah. So, what do we think is the best for them? I'm gonna go Libra. Good guess. Again, Good just because my parents. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, they're in close. Close. Uh, um. Gemini? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that rapport is also really positive for them because Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Okay. Uranus is the higher vibration of Mercury. Oh. So <clears throat> that's why they're always like stimulating, always. Sure, so that sure, sure. It's, whether it's dating or sex, it's any of those yeah. kinds of things. Now, <laughs> who's the worst for Aquarius? Okay, someone who's not stimulating. <laughs> like Capricorn? <laughs> I'm such a bitch. I, this is li this is a personal thing. It's not. I love Capricorns. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about a lot of yeah. you know, zodiac signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scorpios yeah. and Aquarians, you got to be like really hot for Real me ever special. to give you a chance. Yeah, yeah, again. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay, wait. So Aquarius, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go uh, Sagittarius. No. <laughs> Leo, no. <laughs> Aries? It's a fish again. <laughs> oh, the fucking fish. Pisces. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pisces are so emotional and they're so intuitive and yeah. Aquarians are not going to put up with that shit. Yeah. There's like, <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> no. All right, moving forward with Pisces. We okay. love a Pisces. Yes, we do. Uh, they're the waterest water sign. Wateriest. Yeah. Fish. Most liquid water yeah, sign. Yeah, they are. They're the wettest water <laughs> sign. <laughs> Where are my words? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like flushed, you know. Also, I just I'm... made direct eye contact with you really intensely <laughs> while I said they're the wettest water sign. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> it's like, you know. Yeah. Um, um, they, but they're very romantic, very, very sensitive, very intuitive. What would be the best sex for them? Okay, romantic, sensitive, intuitive. Hmm. Cancer? Yes. Okay. She's got it. She's got it. Yes. And then who's the worst? Um We just mentioned it. Uh Aquarius? Yeah. Okay, great. I was yeah. like, not Aries, please. <laughs> Aquarius. Okay, yeah. great. So that's that's our list, you know. Oh my god. That was we did it, you guys. So I hope that helps you guys when you're out there fucking swiping on the apps. Take this into consideration and mm -hmm. get out your buzzer. We need this in every episode we now. We need it. We like... need it. Yeah. No, it's done. It's part of the pod now. Um, Kyle, this has been so fun. I can't wait to have you back very soon. Adore you. Thank I you know. For I adore you. Me. I love having you on. Um, where can everyone find you and book a reading with you guys? He's so so good. Honestly, I cannot uh, sing his praises enough. Everything he said, like Zoe Kravitz and Channing Tatum are engaged. Yeah. You I, fucking I called knew that it. was going to happen. Yeah. You called it. We talked about that like the first like couple weeks that it came out they were dating. Yeah. So he's so good, you guys. Where can I Oh, remember you? we also talked about how um, the it was uh, the Jonas and Sophie. Oh, Turner. yes. They, they were going to have backtrack for a little bit, but yes. they weren't going to fully get back. Yes, together. and that'll happen yeah, too. That'll happen too. So you guys, do yourself a favor. Uh, get with Kyle, have him give you a little reading, do your charts. Where can everyone find you and do that? My website is kylethomasastrology.com. You can book a reading there. My email has not been working as well, so if you don't hear from me right away, uh, I will follow up. Uh, so there's that. My Instagram is Mr. Kyle Thomas, M R K Y L E T H O M A S. I post all of my content there. And my Patreon is my favorite thing right now because it's been building as a community. I release daily horoscopes all sorts of um, individual horse horoscopes, and you also get access to horoscopes like months in advance. So it's pretty cool. Amazing. So, yeah, well thank you again for having awesome. me, and I love you. I love you, <laughs> I can't wait to have you back. We'll have you back very soon, and we will see you guys next time on Glitter and Garbage. Yes. Bye. Bye. Glitter and Garbage.